Hi there everybody, it's UK independent demonstrator Helsey here from slimandstylish.com. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have this really cute little box and inside it is a tea light. These are the big fat tea lights from Ikea. So when you go to Ikea, you can get your normal size tea lights, which are probably about half the size of this, thicker ones and you can also get wider ones. These are the normal diameter of a tea light just a lot thicker so these are one and a half inches by one and a half inches and they're seven eighths of an inch deep and I've got that so it just fits into the box with a cute little lid now the reason why I decided to use this paper because this is not Christmas paper this paper is from the Halloween paper that's in the holiday catalog you can see look it's got cute little bats on the back is because when I do Christmas fairs I like to put out tea lights and boxes and things like this and they sell and they do but if I have any left at the end of it I also have spring fairs and wedding fairs and things like that so I then find it much easier to come back and just lift off the sentiment and replace it with a different one and I can take it to a different fair instead rather than keeping it until next Christmas. So that's why I've used this paper because it's not overly Christmassy and I do quite like this I think it's really classy. I love black for Christmas colours, I really do. So what you need is two sheets of paper. So you've got your base card stock. This is three and five eighths of an inch by three and five eighths of an inch. And then you've got this one here, which is your top. And this is just over three and five eighths of an inch. So it's not three and six eighths. It is just, can you see that? just that much over so when I come to actually use my scoring tool this is the old trimmer I'm waiting for the new one it's going to be amazing it's available to everybody on the 1st of November I'm not sure when I'm scheduling this video so it might be that it's already available um, if so I've seen pictures it's going to be really good so whereas the black is three and five eighths of an inch spot on um, by three and five eighths of an inch this one here, if you are um, British and you have your centimetres on here, it's actually quite helpful. There's your three and five eighths of an inch. It is just over. It is more, it's not three and um, six eighths, it's that one there. So what would that be? Um, if that's an eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, eighteen, eleven sixteenths, or 9.4 centimetres. Um, and it's a square all the way around. So you just need that little bit of wiggle room for it be in the lid. We're going to do some scoring while I've got my trimmer out. So for the base, I'm going to score around at one inch. I could use my scoring tool. I had that out, but as soon as I've got the trimmer here, it just makes sense. Okay. And that's all the scoring you need for the base. For the top, I'm going to score on the underneath. And again, I'm going to score round at an inch. So this is exactly the same as the base so far. I'm also going to score round at three eighths. So just there. If you're on a metric trimmer, you can use the one centimetre line, which is what I'm going to use. But in America, if you just go to three eighths of an inch, it's about the same. OK. I do think this paper is cute. You can always put something in the middle so that people don't know it's got bats on the inside. But how often do people look at the inside? I think it's just cute. I'm going to fold all the score lines over. I'm going to use my burnishing tool because I want crisp score lines. This is actually my second video for this project. I was so silly with the other one. I got just to the end of it. And I went to go and add the snowflakes on and I cut my finger and it bled everywhere. I thought, I can't put that on YouTube. Um, to be honest, I didn't really notice I'd nicked it. I just went, oh, and then 
two or three minutes later when I was sticking everything on there just seemed to be a little pool of blood so we started again once you've burnished all of the black you want to sort of do a windmill cut and I know I've done these before but I don't even know if that's the real name for it it's a healthy name for it I think so once you've done that side turn it it's like those kids windmills that you get in the garden when you're little I used to love those the wind used to push them along I used to have a little fairy one just up there this paper would actually make a really cute jewelry box because it's just very classy I do, I really enjoy black at Christmas. A few years ago, Stamping Up's colours for Christmas was black and old olive and white. I don't know if you remember. I wish I bought more that year because um, it all retired and I miss that. So now you just want to put your adhesive onto this bit and stick it in. Okay, I'm going to be using sticky strip because it's card on card and it means it will stick and stay. Yeah, so I think I was new to Stamping Up when it was the black old olive and white year so would it be two three years ago um and i didn't realize that everything in the holiday catalog well not everything but the majority of the papers and the color schemes and the embellishments that year would go um discontinued so that obviously they could have a refresh the next year which now makes complete sense to me because who wants the same colors every year um, but at the time i didn't realize we had a gorgeous ribbon white and black striped ribbon it was it was lovely um, and then all the DSP um, there was a music sheets one I loved that there was also a um, black and white sort of felty one oh it was so nice I wish I'd have realized and just bought more I'm just saying that I don't really get time to craft and not demonstrate because obviously I'm trying to sell current product um, so I don't really have that much time to play with retired items but I'd have made time for that loved that so anytime I get to play with black for Christmas again I'm just happy all right there we go all taped up remove that all off I like tear and tape for this reason how quick was that when I used to use the red strip before I started at stamping up um you used to have to cut each section and then because it was like a plastic, it was a pain to get off. It really was. This is just so simple. I've done it in seconds. Just, it amazes me, it's ever so good. There we go. And just assemble your box. And that is pretty much for the base. And I'm gonna add my candle in. So it is loose, but only that much loose. If I'd have done it by half a centimetre, which was what I was planning to do, it would have bulged, it wouldn't have been right. Um, so it, it just has that little bit of a wiggle, but I like that in my boxes. Um, that, that I think is fine. Any more of a wiggle would be a pain, but that is just quite nice. So with this one, you have got four squares at each corner. So let me just show you that one there. That is one square. You don't want that in any of the corners. So get rid of the tiny little square. This rectangle that's next to it, that one, you don't want that either. So cut that one off. And you don't want this one either. So out of the three, well, the two rectangles on the square in the corner, you just want to keep this main one. And you want to do exactly the same as what we've just done in the base. So cut all the way up, tally it in. And then these little flaps here, you also want to do a tab in. So that each corner looks like that. There we go. It's a bit difficult to see the score lines on this. I think it's because it's over where the writing is and now I'm trying to work out what the writing is on the Halloween thing. Um, there it says, Our Family. Um, compelling, perfect way. Hmm, I'm not really sure what it says. 
I'll have to have a look at a big sheet of it, but if I do that now, we're never going to finish this project. We're too busy looking at what the wording is. Halloween hasn't happened here yet um, when I'm filming. I know this will be like scheduled, so it will have happened by the time this is scheduled. However, currently it hasn't. We don't really celebrate it quite big in England. It's quite small. Um, and to be honest, I don't celebrate it at all. Um, I will see my godson and his sisters and I'll be like, oh, you're cute. And I'll give them some sweets. But other than that, I'm not really that interested in it. And I will continue the story in a minute. You want to put sticky strip now on each of these fold overs. Just there. Okay. So just run that round. Yeah, so like I said, we don't really do it. And on the way to work, there's a house that has been completely decorated for Halloween. And I see houses completely decorated for Diwali and for Christmas. So around this time of year, I'm used to seeing lights on houses anyway start to crop up. But not really for Halloween. And they're orange. And they've got this orange sort of foam thing that's running through all the hedges. And, you know, it looks so effective. It looks so nice. And everyone keeps coming into work and saying, oh, have you seen the house that's all done up for Halloween? Yeah, I have. It looks great. And I don't know whether it's just because we're unused to seeing it that it's like a new thing for me and I like it. Um, but yeah, I do think it's a really effective thing. So that's my Halloween story. It's unusual to see it and I like it. It's more effective, I think, than the Christmas lights, but then you get Christmas lights on every house. So whether it's just because it's the one, I don't know, but it looks really nice. So for this paper, I've decided that that way is the up way. So my ribbon goes across the side, so I'm going to want to stick it on this flap and on this flap. So this is the gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer ribbon. It's got like a gold um, glitter in it. It's been around for a few years now, and it's just beautiful. So you want to stick it on there. And you want to make sure it's quite tight as it runs around the card. You don't want it loose. And stick it down there. Yeah, quite like that. And then stick all the flaps down. You could have stuck this in the flaps. I'm not doing that, I'm just going to stick that afterwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just stick these down. It's up to you here. You can use glue dots. You can use sticky strip. I'm going to use snail um, for time, really, because I'm doing it on a video. But at the same time, because it is paper onto paper, it will be okay. I am going to put a couple of bits over it to make sure the whole thing is tacky and stuck. Yeah, such little... Little wings and over the top, they go. There's something weird there. What have I done there? I don't know. I've done something weird. It's fixed itself, but it was weird at the time. Oh, there we go. And that's just going to stick on the top like that. And that's why we wanted that extra little wiggle room when we cut it at the start so that you just had that little bit. I'm going to be using two stamp sets for this. I've got the two Every Season stamp set and the Christmas Gleaming stamp set. For Christmas Gleaming, I'm using the Merry Christmas. I'm just going to stamp it onto my Scrap Whisper White using Memento ink. I'm going to be very careful because this is where I cut myself before. And then for the two every season, this has these gorgeous punches with it. So it's got a little bat, a little leaf, a little heart, and it's got the snowflake. So they're really cool. And I never noticed them in the catalogue, so check them out. And this one here is the one that you can punch with. It matches the punch. So again, I'm going to pop some memento ink onto that. To save time when you've got a punch... Look at how the punch is positioned before you stamp your stamp. So I know that there's a bit down the middle, so I'm going to be wanting to stamp it 
like that so that when I do use my punch I can just line it up easy like that so there's my one I'm also going to punch one out of shimmer paper and out of basic black so it's handy to have some scraps on board and then I'm just going to cut Christmas out Merry Christmas although I like it was just too long for the box it was I'd have loved it to have been on fully because I do really like this stamp set but it was just a little bit too long I'll show you oh look I didn't cut it that's I've left black on there and black on there before I cut the whole thing out I'm gonna leave it with the full thing I like that yes there we go <laughs> I'm going to use some mini dimensionals to stick this up one two I wonder why I didn't notice that before I was probably too distracted over the fact that I just tried to chop my finger off That's made me quite happy. So I'm just going to pop that onto there. Move it over a bit. It did fit, didn't it? Yes, it did. There we go. Merry Christmas. And then if these don't sell, I can just remove these sentiments off it and make it into a card for a wedding fair instead. I've got a piece of foam here. I always keep a bit of foam handy when I'm crafting so that I can just always do this with the back of my paper piercer and pop everything up. I'm going to want my glue dots. Okay, one. Two. Three. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to use a rhinestone and I'm going to pop it in the middle of the snowflake. And there we go. Merry Christmas tea light box. What do you think? Isn't that paper gorgeous? Thanks for joining me today. If you liked this project, please subscribe for future projects and head over to slimandstylish.com where you can see all the details on my blog. And if you head up to the top banner and click buy, all of these items will be available for purchase from my store. Thank you for joining me. Bye.